Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Oh, Perry. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Everybody give it up. Perry has just had his birthday. Well, you had your birthday? Had my birthday by the had time it? this comes out. Yes. Yeah. I Big ass August. Big ass birthday. Yeah. Hey, man. What's up? Hi, everybody. This is my bourbon podcast. Welcome back. I'm the host, Perry. And with me, as always, it's Eric, the Whiskey Mutant. It's me. Yeah. Um. Thanks for that. Yeah. It made me feel something. Well, I, I know what makes you feel something, so I get from <laughs> doing that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, I had my 30th birthday this Monday. Rio. Big, big three. I'm an old man. We're finally in our 30s together. I don't feel like it. You shouldn't. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I just don't, you know. Yeah, I feel like I'm 50. I feel like I've been 103 since I was I feel like 10. an old fart <laughs> Uh, but yeah, podcasting stops for no birthday. No. And no man. No. Which is why we're still here with you, dear wonderful people. And uh, thank you so much for, for being here. If you want to uh, support the show. This is a heck of an intro, by the way. Really? You yeah, just kind of threw me off with it I a know, little bit. And, I, know yeah. I, I know what I need to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are in the middle of our joint birthday month. It's not just mine. Uh, and it's big ass August, which means that over on the Patreon, patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast, uh, for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the show. But at five bucks a month, there's so much bonus content that's over there for you. Uh, and that is including but not limited to the pregame chats, which come out with every episode. We usually flip flop between pours from the floor and simply irresistible. We've got a new show that we kind of threw together, uh, this week as well that I think is, um, well, we'll we'll let you hear it first before I'm gonna say the title of it. No, it's better if you read it yeah. and use your own imagination. Um, so go <laughs> go check that out. Uh, we've also got rewards for people who sign up uh, this month as well. If you are at the five dollar or above tier, uh, on top of everything that you normally get with uh, signing up for the Patreon, you'll also be getting a special little personalized voice message memo slash mini episode Hi, that it's your boys it's tim <laughs> that literally nobody else uh will get uh personalized to you uh and then if you are at the twenty dollar and up tier on top of the shirt that you should get uh for signing up at that tier uh you will also get a free sticker with it as nice, well nice so nice. um i think there was something else Oh, yeah, we got a couple new patrons this yeah! week. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I met them the other day. Oh, did you know? Mm -hmm. oh. All of them. Well, uh, I'm excited to hear your uh, your meat counter exploits. A exploits? Different. A little different. Yeah. Maybe a deli. We'll see. We'll see together. Maybe something. <laughs> Food truck. Who knows? We'll see. But we got a big episode for you guys this yeah. week. Uh, kicking it off with, I guess, sips and snacks. Nope. Flying blind? Flying blind. Flying blind. There Which we I go. Gotta, I'm going to blind you, and I need to go get it because I couldn't. You're just going to turn your head for a second. Okay. I got to get it ready. Do you want to do that while I'm telling people what's going to happen this episode as well? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to be doing flying blind. We're also going to be uh, talking about a little bit of news that, uh, that happened this week. Uh, not a whole lot, but uh, we've also got a very special review for you uh, coming Later this episode, I, I haven't seen a review for this anywhere else. Have you, Eric? Uh, I don't know. I think, I mean, the, our buddies at the podcast did something with something real the other day. Yeah, but they lit that on fire. Yeah, I don't think, but I don't know. Uh, Wrestling with Whiskey may have put out a little thing. Okay. Um, so if you saw his page, you may have saw it. But gotcha. That's about it. Um, but uh, yeah, on, on top of all that, we've also got uh, High Proof Hot Takes. Got a barrel ring to get to and tips and bits. And that's going to be an episode. But in the meantime, uh, I just want to say thank you guys for being here. I streamed last night as well, which was last week for you all. Um, bit of a shorter stream, just kind of trying to find my sea legs again, getting back into the swing of it. But I'm, I'm not used anymore to uh, <laughs> talking for an hour on my own. 
and I could feel my anxiety really building up. Um, it's kind of a ticking time bomb. So I'm back. Oh, hello. It's good to see you. So I got two flying blinds. What? Um, we'll do that one. We'll do this first. Okay. I'll go ahead and prepare my glass for the next. Hmm. 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 That's really nice. Yeah. It smells kind of dusty. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Not really. Probably had some dust from over there. Okay. All right. I'm not picking up anything specifically that I think this is. Oh, I've got a bottle we're going to crack together, too. crack a lacking. Forgot about that. It's a... Well, I'm not going to say it because yeah. you got to head to the Patreon to understand that yeah. fully. Right, cheers. It smells great, though, man. Cheers, indeed. Pretty good, right? Yeah. 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 Soothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? What do you think? What do you think, guys? Is this when you're getting me back for Gonda? <laughs> this is a gift. You're actually going to take this bottle home. Mm. Really? Yeah. Because I noticed something the other day and I wish I would have known. I, I wish I would have been like we would have been closer and I would have been on the podcast and closer with you before I actually opened this and had had a lot of it and stuff because it would have made a lot more sense for you to have it than me. I don't even Well, you got to tell you got to tell me what you think about it first. Um it's really warm. It's warm and like kind of cherry and allspice forward. Yeah. Like I part of me feels like it's turkey but the other part feels like it's a buffalo trace product. Um these particular particular releases have been known to be hit or miss. Um it's a year yearly release. Um, so there's not a lot of this left because I've had it. I had a lot when I first got it and then I put it back. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so it is your birthday. This is a birthday bourbon. Yeah. And I didn't really pay attention until the other day that I actually had, um, a, t my birthday bourbon. The one I have is a 2020. Really? And what happened in 2020? Eden was born. Yes. So when I saw that, I said, if I would have only been a little closer on the show and stuff, I probably would have not opened that and I would have gave it to you sooner. So I want you to keep the rest of this and you can keep it. Maybe you save it until she's 21. Maybe you just have it on her birthday or something. But there's about well, a half snap, a bottle. dude. It's a... Um, 2020 barrel 2010. It's 98 proof. So there you go. Kit. So that should that's about Thank half. You. Yeah. My goodness. So I, mm. I'm. It's a really good one. I've had really bad ones too, though. I, that I, I think that we've talked about it before too. That we have like gift anxiety. Yeah. With like both giving and receiving, right? So I'm a I apologize. This means a whole lot, yeah, to me. And I'm trying to accurately express that. You don't have to, express but I'm, it. I know how much it means to you. You don't have to even say anything. Um, right when we were See, in it the is a dusty, See, it's got it some, is, yeah. it's got some dust on there. Right when we were in the hospital, uh, after Lucy's water broke, I was. And this is the only bourbon that I have been able to secure a sample of from Old Forester. Yeah. Literally the only one. And I was messaging back and forth with the lady that was handling like the sample distribution and everything. And she was like, okay, we got you down. It's going to be delivered tomorrow. And I was like, okay, do I need to sign for it or anything? I'm not there right now. My wife just had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, well, that's very appropriate. Right, right. So I've still got a little like 50 mil bottle of this somewhere. It's tucked away in all the boxes that I have. Um, but 
Yeah, dude. Um, ge- genuinely, this means a whole lot. Thirty is a big birthday. Yeah. So I wanted you to have a big gift. I think I. Seriously. I got you one more gift. <laughs> okay. I didn't have time to wrap it though, because I just it just got shipped and mailed to, like yesterday. I don't know. Oh, shoot! There it is. The dopiest looking Spider-Man Funko Pop ever. Yes. (laughs) But so this was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Right. And um, I... uh, Can't believe that you pulled this off. Yeah. (laughs) Told you. I got people out there. Dang, dude. So, yeah. We all... I've only been to Comic-Con one time, and it was amazing, but uh, we always love talking about the toys and stuff. Yeah. And so I'll, I have friends that live in San Diego. Shout out if you're listening. But, um, so, yeah, help me get that for you. That Freaking was the one, one of the few things you sent me that I was able to secure. So, happy birthday. I, thank you, man. I'm still getting toys for my birthday, even at 30. I probably got you a Funko last year. Did I get you a Funko last year? I've got you like Dragon Ball Z stuff and all that. I don't remember what I got I last remember, year. I don't remember either. That shows how good of a friend I am. Well, that. I don't remember either. <laughs> so there you go. Perry's birthday surprises. Heck yeah, dude. Thank you. Oh. I'm not a big like... Uh, like I try to keep the collectibles that I get to a minimum. Dude, I had to stop. I'm, I'm like bourbon now. Like I've had yeah. to like pull pull back a little bit. I'm like I can't buy these figures and stuff. Yeah, I mean they're everywhere. I got a whole shelf of stuff everywhere. So, dang, dude. There you go. Love Thank you. Thank you. Love you too. Oh, we don't normally wait. hug on the podcast. I can't wait till tomorrow night when we go out because then I'm not going to be nice. <laughs> Shots of uh, SoCo. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. This is like a nice place that we're going to as well. Which <laughs> oh yeah, You're taking the mutant to a nice place. <laughs> uh, I deserve it though. <laughs> I deserve it. Well, while we're talking about what we've been drinking recently, do we want to crack um, birthday bottle? Well, that's up to you. Mm-hmm. That's up to you. Look at that. I've been holding on to this for four or five months. How no. did you get that? Did somebody find it or did you? Look no, up I found on it. it. You lucked up on it. I lucked up on it. <laughs> so, so cool. Um, Henry McKenna, 10 year, bottom of bond. I just walked into the, <laughs> the liquor store and I mean, they had cases of it. Not just like, and I could literally only afford one at the time well, because it was marked up to, it was like 60 dollars. Yeah, like around here, at least for us, McKenna Henry McKenna Ten is like that. The stores will get like every couple of months, like one big shipment of them, and they'll put it all out. Yeah. Um. And so, I mean, I I saw it, and I figured for my thirtieth, I needed something special. To I crack. like that. That is like. It used to not be that special, but now it is special, and plus it's got your birth uh, birth date on there. Yeah, because we can't yeah, it's not get a McK- birth it's not a birth year. We can't it's a get McKenna. Here we can attend. Not like we used to. But I've got one. I've got two. I've got one open. I've got this one that I decided not to open because it's the barrel number five thousand. Oh snap! And it's four seven zero oh, eight. So I've kept this one just because I was like five thousand is a cool barrel number. That's really cool. Yeah. So I've had that for a while, and that's a full four years before this one. Right. So look at I mean how much they've put out between five thousand and barrel twelve thousand seven hundred sixty. Seven thousand seven hundred sixty barrels since then. That's wild. That's insane. You go for it, man. Yeah, this, I mean, this particular, you know, expression just still holds such sentimentality yeah. to me anyway, because it was one of those, like, I'm going to splurge a little bit and spend $30 on do you, do a you, bottle of bourbon. Do you blame Fred Minnick for this? Not solely. Because, Partly. I mean, kind of yes and kind of no. And my reasoning behind it is that 
even if he did say that this was a great bottle or a great expression, he can't control the way that other people react to it. Remember when he said that about Rare Breed and for about two weeks, Rare Breed was sold out yeah, everywhere. everywhere. I was so mad. <laughs> but the good thing is, I mean, it's coming back in it is. pretty pretty much full force at this point. But Happy birthday. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Ooh, that smells good. That smells like classic Heaven Hill, baby. I'm so, so, so happy. That smells... <laughs> And I know it's going to taste way better than something we had on the Patreon this week. <laughs> oh. Oh, my gosh. That's solid, baby. Oh, the mouthfeel. Oily. Oily. Bakery. I don't even know. I've never noticed this before on the back of this bottle. And I want to keep. I want you to keep in mind where this comes from. It says this ten-year-old single barrel is a one-of-a-kind bourbon and one of the few bottled and bond products available <laughs> from the company who has every bottled and bond. <laughs> That's what I mean. Y'all crazy over there. Y'all crazy at Heaven Hill. Bernie, talk to your guys. Y'all crazy. Talk to your people. <laughs> this is legit though. This is a smash all day long. Dang, dude. It's nice too because I mean there there was kind of a a period as well where McKenna single barrels did get a little bit hit or miss. Yeah. And I think that they're consistently going back to oh. being hitters. I got even more spice yeah. on the finish. Like I'm tasting it right now. It this reminds me so much of the old Elijah Craig 12 year old pirate mm-hmm. bottles. Just got that snickerdoodle. Yep. quality about it mm. i love he- uh, heaven hill man that's good i love Henry McKinnon. what have you been drinking recently we forgot to talk about that while we were uh, talking about I, Henry McKinnon. I would say the most i didn't have anything for a few days because i worked a lot this week but last night um i got home a little late um i tried to catch some of the stream um it was a little uh, a little patchy when I was a little hard to, to watch, <laughs> uh, but I finally got chilled out, cleaned up, uh, and uh, my neighbor was out and he asked if uh, I wanted some Rock Hill Farms, and I said, "Yeah, please," because I haven't had Rock Hill in forever. Um, and it was good. It was kind of like this. It was like, man, I forgot how good this really is. Like yeah. it's a hundred proof, just one of the best expressions. Um. I haven't able I haven't been able to get my own bottle f- since like 2017. And I had one and I gifted it. I've told you this before. I just gave it to my friend Tom. Baron Corbin Tom? Yeah, yeah. 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 I gave it to him because I was like, here's a good bottle. I'll just grab another one next time Liquor Barn releases it. <laughs> <laughs> never again. That was the last time I got one. I've never owned one. I've had three. And the first two were ones that went before I like made a collection. They were just like, I know, I know it's a good bourbon. I know. So it was like one of like four bottles that I just kept because I would keep like two or three bottles at a time. Yeah. And I could consistently get it. (laughs) Those were the days. Yeah. I could consistently (laughs) get it. So I was just like, yeah, I got this. I haven't opened it yet. Take it. I'll get another one. Nope. I haven't got one since. All right. I know that we're kind of both struggling with like the collector side of things with with bourbon right now. <laughs> <laughs> Twitching. Yeah, sweating from it and huh. everything. Um What would it take for us to whittle it back down to say a dozen bottles? Now, are we doing ourselves a disservice by having so many bottles? The majority of me right now says yes. Yeah. Because I come down here and I look at things now. And if I like works over, everything's chill when I have like a pour before bed or something. 
I'm like torn and I, I get more anxiety trying to figure out what I want to have. Yeah. And it's like, do I want to have like something that I don't normally go to? Or do I need to finish this stuff that I know I don't need? Like, where am I at? And like, if I had like 12 bottles in front of me, maybe like half of them would be like everyday drinkers and half of them would be specials. And I'll be like, you know what? Maybe I'll have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah. And now it's like, sometimes I'm like, I just need to drink this because I need to finish it. Yeah. I think that my dogs are going crazy. I think your dogs are losing their minds. I think that part of this, like, struggle that we're we're both going through as well is the wrestling with drinking less no i'm coming for him i know you are i want (laughs) to wrestle him can't wait to see it yeah he doesn't know what i know i mean i know all his moves (laughs) i know all his moves to watch all his matches he doesn't know mine are you working on a on a on an outfit oh yeah you know what okay um (laughs) What was I saying? Oh, drinking less. Yeah. Because, like, a big part of it is, like, as you start to back off, you go, I'm never going to get through all this. Yeah. (laughs) And, like, what are my kids going to do with this if I die before? And, like, I don't know if you do this, but you may do this, but you've had probably more people over, like, coming through and stuff. I get in my head, I'm like, what if people come over and I've got to like compare, like I got to have these bottles so I can show yeah. them the comparison. Uh, why not just say, Ooh, I've got 12 good bottles like that. Somebody can, can, can come over and enjoy. Well, that that's the other side of it too. Like we kind of get it in our heads that we have to have the things that other people might want to try or, yeah. you know, a wide, a wide variety. Like our, we're expected and, to have that. Exactly. And, I don't I don't hold on to that expectation for myself anymore. And part of that, too, is that I know that there are always going to be bottles that will replace other ones. Mm. Right. It comes and goes. And so I'm I'm trying to let go of the I've got to hold on to this bottle for something special. Right. And just drink it and, and yeah. kind of be done with it. Because, yeah, like, even if I'm not sharing it with somebody, just like the memory of being able to enjoy it right. myself. Yeah. I mean, like, that's that's still a special moment yeah. to me. So I get <laughs> I've become more introspective in my old ways. Sure. We're getting old. <laughs> <coughs> you ain't going to drink this, boy. You're never going to get rid of it. Okay, yeah, you're probably Yeah, you know right. what? You're right. I am never going to drink that yeah. Trader Joe's winter wheat bourbon again. <laughs> Have you ever had that? Uh, Probably. I don't know. Have you tried it in the last couple of years? It, I, I mean, I have a bottle. I was gifted a bottle. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever brought it out for you to You're never going to finish try. that Hidden Barn Batch 1. You know what? I put it in some reels and I've wasted a lot of it. It's come. It's I've used it for something. What have you been drinking? Um, nothing too crazy. I don't know if I talked about this, but before we left on Ritter vacation, I had stopped in a store just to grab supplies for the trip because you know I know what I want. Yeah, and I wanted to make sure that I had I had particular bottles yeah. and. Um, You know, I drank a lot less on this trip than I normally do on vacations. I only brought three bottles. And uh, for the most part, they were gone by the end of the week. It wasn't just you drinking them, though. That's true. But, you know, I I just don't... I didn't feel the need to, like, drink as much this year. Um, And and this is also another, like, mental thing that I've been going through recently, too. And... um, especially like bringing it back to the mental health side of things. I've, I've grown to be a person of, I don't want to over medicate myself yeah, or get to a point where like I'm suppressing feelings of anxiety, depression, whatever. I, I would rather feel them and experience them 
so that a I know where I am emotionally, mentally, and I can appreciate more the times when I'm not yeah going through that. And it's not to say that I'm not still medicated because I am. <laughs> I still take depression and anxiety medicine. Um, but that's more for just kind of balancing things out yeah. than it is trying to suppress anything. Um, so what was I talking about? Oh, um, I went to the store, grabbed supplies for it and everything. Um, and while I was in there, I saw sitting behind the counter. Lash Craig Barrel Proof B523. Nice. And I was like, I'm going to buy this. Yeah. I'm going to let it sit. Yeah. In the house. Yeah. Until I get home. Yeah. And then when I get home, I'm going to open it. Not take it on vacation. Did you? No, I didn't take it on vacation. I left it in the house until we got home. Waited? And I waited. And I walked into the kitchen, which where it was sitting on top of the refrigerator. You saw it. You said, get over here. I had completely like forgotten Scorpio. about it. Get over, get over here. I hadn't thought about it once when we were on the trip. And it was such a welcome surprise to walk in. And I just, nobody else is around. And I out loud went, oh. <laughs> just moaned in there. By yourself. This is what I got to come home to. And it was just so, it was just so nice. You know, your favorite bourbon. Of all time, just kind of waiting for you there. That was a good batch, too. So, yeah. And so I, I've been drinking on that a little bit. Um, I picked up a Knob Creek pick from Liquor Barn last week, I think, that has been very well loved. There you go. <laughs> and spectacular. Ten um, it was nine and a half. Nine and a half. Um, but I, I kind of took a gamble on it. You know, I'm, I'm being more discerning with the 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 single barrels that I pick up, I'm hoping that, you know, I can, you know, get a 10 year, but there wasn't any available. So I just was like, ah, eh, screw it. I may yeah. as well just get this. Um, and it's been, I want to see somebody really just randomly get like a 15 year pick again. Just ran out of nowhere. Yeah. Goes for $500 <laughs> on secondary. <laughs> um, but I think otherwise, I mean, it's been pretty, Stock standard. Yeah. You know, nothing like over the top. I did. I will say, though, I did have some Lawrenceburg Bourbon Company award winning. This is my bourbon weekend. Oh, yeah. You pick did. <laughs> yesterday. Gold. And medal. Uh, that is one heck of a barrel of whiskey. Sold out. So if you got one, you got one. And if not, sorry about you. Did Okay. This Speaking of Lawrenceburg, not, not that particular company, but. If you've been on social media or anything, did everybody and their mother go pick a Russell's Reserve pick like a, over the past like week? Did you not notice everybody? I did. I'm like, what? What is happening? Are they just handing everybody Russell's picks? Every My, time I turn around, somebody's at, at Wild Turkey picking a Russell's. Pick. Mash and Journey just did one yesterday. It's Bourbon Night, I think, did one. Um, I think ADHD whiskey was doing. Yeah, one. he was here while I was gone. I think Rare Bird was doing. Rare Bird picked like four. <laughs> I was like, "What is this?" I'm so mad. I was jealous. I was we'll get on it. We'll FOMO. get. We'll do I it eventually. Pick a it's the best. I don't. I just want to. It's help. it's it's just one of the best experiences. Help. We don't have to put our name on it. We just want to be there. I mean, I want to put my name on. Well, it. yeah, we want to, but I'm saying you don't have to. I'm like, <laughs> if you don't, I feel like I ruined. A lot of things like I don't want that guy that ruins whiskey on their pick. You you know, my only problem with Russell's picks is when I have them, I just drink through them God. so quickly. That's probably the most like there's probably so many picks over there on my shelf of the Russell's that. Yeah, it looks like I have a lot, but there ain't a lot left in those bottles. That's kind of the reason why I started doing the consolidation of infinity bottles yeah. with with picks or batches or single barrels or whatever um just because yeah i don't have all the room in the world right <laughs> and i do need to go through and do some infinity bottling or something i don't know it, it's it's so funny how i feel like i've come 
maybe not full circle back around to some of the things that I did when I first started yeah. with the podcast and being a bourbon drinker, but um at the very least, just kind of like easing off the gas on some of the more like aggressive tendencies oh, of I know. being a bourbon collector. Yeah, I've definitely done the same. Yeah. Like I've not bought anything recently that I feel like I'm going to just hang on to for a long time. I, mean, I have. <laughs> There's one of them sitting on the table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Should I've, we, um... I've been more excited about this than I have probably any anything i've got recently i'm kind of just ready to get into it let's do it all right because i mean i know i know i said we were going to do some news we can run over it super quickly if you want do it um buffalo trace is changing the name of their single barrel program to sazerac barrel select instead of single barrel select they are um they're widening it so that more people have access to single barrels, just like they've kind of been doing earlier in the year. Are they going to do single barrels well. of this? I I hope so because <laughs> yeah, I mean it's what right. a what a mutant thing to do. Oh yeah, <laughs> imagine if imagine the first one was like a whiskey mutant pick, and know? we get to like put a sticker of your your mutant logo on the yeah, it's on my, the head yeah, of the it's right there. Yeah yeah, 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 exactly. That'd be amazing. Um, this was kind of a weird thing. And it made me it made me a little queasy reading it, but Heaven Hill and uh, Log still settled their dispute over the use of the JW Dant name. Oh yeah, I remember that going on. And Heaven Hill is going to continue being the only ones able to use JW Dant's name on their products. The actual people that have that their family has the name mm-hmm. doesn't get to okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, I guess Heaven it, Hill it, love you to death, but if if they got a big amount of money or something, then I would say okay, we did it for family. No, it was Vin Diesel it was, would do that. For it his was family. like an amicable <sighs> understanding. That's why I don't like getting into like the political or not political, but like the business and like nitty gritty, nitty gritty thing. Things, yeah. I just want to enjoy the whiskey, and I hear that, and I'm like, ooh. So. Yeah, just kind of makes your skin crawl a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the other one, we're going to miss him dearly at this particular place. But, oh, I know uh, this one. Macaulay has left uh, Wilderness Trail oh, yeah. as their uh, single barrel captain. Yeah. If you've ever done a pick from Wilderness Trail, you've met him. Or if you've been drinking on a pick, he's been the one to help make sure that pick got to you. So The, the reason that funky nerds oh he's the only in reason infamy. i have that right that's there. what i'm saying like yeah. that's that's the reason that it exists in any kind of capacity between you know the 10 bit sheets should we have some funky nerds in honor of macaulay kind of? yeah let's do it yeah let's have a little bit i even have a nerd thing on there that says funky <laughs> look at this yeah and the a jack daniels no, no, that's the funniest thing too <laughs> because macaulay <laughs> Is not a fan of Jack Daniels, I don't think. Because <laughs> I have posted like a picture of my shelf, and I used to have my Jack Daniels on the same shelf as Wilderness Trail, and he's like, you need to get more Wilderness Trail to get those Jack Daniels off there. Boy, so, howdy, you took care of that, didn't yeah. you? So I don't know if that's true, but <laughs> I don't know if uh, he would approve of me having this in a little Jack Daniels, but look at that. Funky nerds, get out of there. Why is, my camera doesn't well, but There it is. Hey. There it is. This is one of the not chosen picks of the uh, picking uh, in the rain. Picking in the rain, but I secured it thanks to McCulley. What a great time! It was one of the drunkest I've ever seen you. Oh my god! It still lives in inf- infamacy in my house. Infamacy, whatever. It is. You say however you say. Well, my favorite word. was, and I know I've said it, but walking in. And I was I was going like April, I'm so sorry. And she just looks at you and goes, <laughs> <laughs> "I don't remember that. It was a lot. It was that. It was that pour off the steel when they gave us the straight. Yeah, that's what did it. I know that's what did it. It's Wilder- all good to laugh about tra- now, though. A wilderness trail single barrel that nobody else has. Nope. Uh, also, Macaulay said he'd like to be on the show and talk about his uh, his journey. Let's so do it. maybe during Bourbon Heritage <sighs> Month. Oh, God, I think it's got funkier. <laughs> yes, I'm here for it. Eric, that doesn't smell good. No, I like that it. That smells like manure. 
That's the thing, though. That's one of those smells that you don't, you, like, you just instantly recognize whether you like it or not. Dude, that's so good. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> that's mutinous fog. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday to me. The palate has got better. Dude. Yes. But the nose smells like all of the all of the aromas of a movie theater and a kid vomited in the lobby. The palate is like if you ate skull chewing tobacco. Oh, on the finish? Yeah. <laughs> so grossly minty. Mm. Oh, that's that is funky. So for all those turds who are like I've got the smokiest scotch for you, and I'm going to kill your palate. <laughs> this is my version of that for, like, the rye and bourbon drinker. He's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm going to kill your palate with something. Right here, baby. Oh, man. That's... Look at it. It's it's rough. <laughs> I knew this I... was a winner from the day. I <laughs> Oh, you are right with the <laughs> chewing tobacco. Yeah. yeah, if you could drink chewing tobacco, that's oh. what it would be. That's very appropriate for what, what we're getting ready to go into. What probably. happened with this I don't know, <laughs> single I, barrel? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my bourbon podcast is brought to you by Rexing. Uh Eric, I, I gotta be honest with you. The amount of times that I have been driving and, you know, just thought, wouldn't it be great if I could just show people the insanity of uh, humanity driving around me? No, oh, I is... mean, parking lots and some old people and stuff, <laughs> stuff going on. We I mean, we could have actually seen that old man who got out of his car in the Zaxby's drive through. Oh, the one. Yeah. The one that tried to take my food and stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the folks at Rexing are here to make those dreams come true for everybody. Uh, they are a leader in selling dash cams, hunting cameras, and body cams uh, for all of your needs. You can find everything you need to uh, about them below at the link for Rexing. Uh, every dollar that you spend with them as well goes towards supporting this My Bourbon podcast. And we thank Rexing for supporting this uh, this episode. Thank you, so Rexing. Thanks, thanks Rexing. You could, you could also make a viral video. I mean, you it. could. <laughs> you know how many times I, I see like a video of somebody like like falling or like a deer that comes up in the trail and like does something funny? Or a car exploding? Bigfoot. If, if we're going to capture Bigfoot, it's going to be via a dash cam. Or trail cam. They do trail cam. Or trail cam. Oh, Absolutely. the dash cam too when it just walks across the road too? 100%. But it's also good to have if you, you know, somebody ever bumps into you. You can't get a quick pick. There you go. There you go. Rexing. Thank you, Rexing. This is my bourbon podcast is also brought to you by Adam and Eve. Mm. Eric, we're both men. Yes, we with, are. With uh, with wives. We are. And we do have wives. <laughs> despite what a lot of people may think yeah, about us. Yeah, that's true. Um, and look, sometimes you just need a little bit of, uh, you need a little something to, to spice things up. It's fun. In the bedroom. Listen. We're all adults. We're if, all if adults. If you're drinking bourbon and whiskey, you're over 21, you're supposed to be. We're adults. It's fine to have fun in the bedroom. Absolutely. And we like to think, too, that, you know, not that we're constantly talking about sex. Right. But we're thinking about we it. are sex positive. Oh, I'm very sex positive. <laughs> you're positive that you like sex? I'm very positive. There I we do. go. Uh, just like the folks at Adam and Eve who have been in business since 1971, uh, they are the leading online retailer for adult toys, uh, serving over 10 million customers uh, with the best adult sex toys and, and adult novelties. Just, that's just how in it the is. Business. Just straight up the best. That's just, yeah, exactly. Uh, and again, every dollar that you spend using our affiliate link in the description goes to support this My Bourbon Podcast. So, spice up your bedroom life. Have fun. Have some fun Being with an it. Adult? Look, this is the chance, too, for you to not only support your love life, 
Yeah. But also support some creators that you love. Yeah. When well. you're when you're using those toys the best there is, think of us. Think of I was just about to make that same joke. But yeah, check Thank out you, Eric. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, use the link in the description below so that you can support the show. Thank you, Adam and Eve, for supporting this member podcast. All right. So we've been talking about this bottle for a while. You know, and I will say once we reveal it, it was quite a task to get this because I didn't know if we were going to get it. I'll be honest. Just tell them what we got. Well, before I reveal it, this is fun. This is fun. So, and, and there's an aspect of this that almost feels like it's come full circle. Yeah. And I truly, truly wish that Swan were here oh to God. drink this with us. But. We've been talking about it for a while. As soon as it popped up in feeds and as we found out that it was going to be a thing, we said, let's do it. We got to. And so this is the very first barrel aged <laughs> fireball. Look at that. It's a, it's a small batch. It's aged in oak barrels. So what are supposed to be bourbon barrels. Um, 66 per you presenting it like it's a fine wine. Yeah, a, dude. <laughs> Look at that. Cinnamon whiskey finished in charred oak barrels for a superior fiery smoothness. Uh, 66 proof. So cinnamon flavor added. So when they put this up, they did a pre-order for it and, um, I was ready and, uh, I got, there's only like 700 bottles of this or something like that. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I'm saying, like, I'm pretty sure if you look it up, there there is a very limited amount of bottles of this. Um, Before we go too far. Okay. Would you do me a big favor? What? And go grab the Old Rip 10 bottle. <laughs> the empty one? The empty one. The one that we crushed. Doesn't have body. to be. It does. I just, we need. Oh, you know what else I got from two years ago? What? Fireball, <laughs> regular fireball from two years ago at the meetup when the shelf turds were with us. They had all that fireball. Oh my god, I have a sample. Uh, it's not a sample, but I have a little mini fireball. All right, fine. Ah. <laughs> Is it the same? I think it's <laughs> <laughs> It's the exact same. <laughs> and they just didn't put that foil on top of it. <laughs> Oh, it's a counterfeiter's wet dream. <laughs> Look at this. The Fireball Small Batch Aged Whiskey bottle is the exact same as the Rip Van Winkle bottles. Same. I mean, this, and, I, and, I, and I'm talking about all the way up to the 23 year. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That is the funniest thing we could have experienced with this. Wow. This was a good time. There's a little bit left in there. Is there really? Yeah. Hey, there it is. Can't really taste it. <laughs> it's just bourbon flavored water at that point. Pretty much. All right. Should we familiarize ourselves with um <sighs> oh, with Fireball boy. proper before we get yeah, to the barrel aged version? This has been sitting in the basement for a while. Basement aged. Basement aged cinnamon in a, whiskey. In a plastic yeah. one hundred mil bottle. Thanks to uh, or fifty mil. Shelf turds, or as they like to be called now, whiskeychannel.com.com. Dot com. Which, honestly, incredible branding. Yeah, for sure. The the best branding that could have been done. <laughs> Ever. Ever. Which one? Period. This, this one. one. That's my funky nerd's glass. Funky nerds. <laughs> so when will we see... Something rebarreled in the fireball barrel. <laughs> That's what I want to see. <laughs> the new antique collection release. Oh, God. That smells so fake. It just does not smell real. This is not the it smells like Christmas. This is normal <laughs> fireball. This is not the not the barrel aged one. I mean, like, I don't like it, but there is a sense of But I don't mind comfort it. to I don't it. Mind it. Yeah, exactly. All right. It just tastes <laughs> like you're drinking a fireball. 
like the candy, the fireball, the atomic <laughs> fireball thing. I mean, it is what it is, you know? It is what it is. Okay. Well, excuse me, but... Well, that wasn't hard to acclimate ourselves to fireball. No, what it is, I don't like, unfortunately. It's so syrupy shots, and shots, weird. Shots, shots, It's shots. It's made yeah. for shots. There's a reason people go in that have problems and they buy 12 packs of these in the shots. They're side. the same people who buy handles every two days of... <laughs> of Kentucky gentlemen. Yeah. All right. Pop it. Ooh. It's a good court pop. It's the same. <laughs> It's the same. It's the exact same it's chord. The, it's the same. That is the same. It's even like a real cork, too. It's not synthetic. No, it's the same. Only releasing 618 bottles as a promotion for Father's Day. On for Father's Day? 618. Hey, kids, you want to get your dad the best present possible and let him drink himself into a coma on Father's Day? Well, have we got something for you? He wants something a little classier than Fireball, but not so classy that it's bourbon. Fireball Barrel Age. The bottles batch. were available for pre-order in select states beginning June 16th. So yeah, 618 bottles of this. Now let me tell you before we get into this, the journey it took to get this Yes, bottle. please. Um, so <laughs> Story time, kids. Story time. Gather um, around, children. Gather around. Um... I was uh, texting our friend uh, Matt uh, wrestling with whiskey because he also got one. He kind of posted on a story. Look what I got. And I was like, hey, I got one, too. Um, so it took like two months before they started almost two months before they started like shipping them out. It was all pre-order. And once it got closer, I started seeing people like posting like somebody posted one in like a local group. And they were like, oh, it sucks that they can't ship to Kentucky. I was like, hold up. Like, I pre-ordered this. Like, it's already gone. And I was like, really? Can't... So that got me worried. So then I got a notification from the website and stuff that I needed to update my payment. And I was like, what in the world? So I get on there because they're getting ready to ship them. And it, like, it keeps messing up. It won't let me update my payment. I'm like, what is happening? So I'm like, okay, this is messed up. And eventually it said... This is not available in your area. And I was like, huh? So I emailed him. I was like, hey, what's going on? It looks like there's a hold. Like I've got like a holding charge. You charged it, but now it's updating all this stuff. I finally get an email back that was like, um, sorry, our system messed up with PayPal because I'd put my PayPal payment on there. Yeah. So here's a link. To, they had to send me a special link to update my <laughs> payment. So they really wanted you to have this bottle. Yeah, because then I, <laughs> because before I got something that said it doesn't even ship to our location. So eventually it all got updated and this was safely in our hands. <laughs> so I could have just canceled it. I could have just been like, oh, crap, and just canceled. But, you Not know, what? content I pursued. I sent I hate sending emails. Um, and I did. I sent a whole email talking about how I wanted this. And here we go. We're here. All right. Barrel aged fireball. Let's find out together. Well, wow, it smells like fireball. <laughs> it does not smell as strong, though. No, it does not. The cinnamon smell is not as strong. I will say that. Also, I think your daughter might be making chocolate chip cookies. Oh, yeah? That's, smell what, it? that's what it smells like, at least. Maybe that's the fireball. Barrel aged fireball. You know what? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm going to say it is fireball on the nose, but there is a little bit. It's a mild fireball with a little bit of kind of like a desserty thing. Yeah, on there. it's it's a little. It's rounder. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's taking some of the edge off of it. It it smells like if somebody put out a bourbon, but they said they aged it in fireball. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that's going to happen soon. It'll happen eventually. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Thank it. Thank it. Ah. <laughs> 
I'm not mad at this. You have to admit, I know the face you're making. You you gotta admit that's better that's better than a regular fireball. It though. is, but I still don't like it. <laughs> this just tastes <laughs> like <laughs> finish is so weird. I um, this is so mutant. This is the most this is so mutant. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a hundred percent. It's not great, but this is a a major step up from if you're just drinking Fireball neat. You know what I mean? Like this no, is it, a step right. up if you're drinking it neat. You know what? I think this is probably closer to Good Times. No, Hidden Barn. No, <laughs> this is better than Hidden Barn. Uh, is it though? Let's compare. All right. Happy birthday to me. Dude, I already know this is better than Hidden Barn. I don't know. Dude, trust me. I, I did a little a little quick snip of this the other day when I was doing something, and it ain't gotten any better. I'm sorry, Hidden Barn. No, you're not. I'm not. You, not once have you been sorry about that particular opinion. I should just take that back. I'm not sorry. Like, this is not a good bottle. It was batch one. Send send me some batch. I'm not buying any more of your product. If you send me some more stuff, if you're listening, I will try it, but I'm not paying money for it. I at least feel... Oh, God. I feel more at home with it. Like... Because you've, tr- you've had more bad bourbons than you have bad fireballs yeah but i'd rather have bad bourbon over fireball this this is more refreshing smelling than this is like you said like it's cinnamon is christmas (laughs) telling you man God, that fireball is way better. I'll stand by it. I'm not even going to justify it or anything. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's better. Dude, it's so bad. <laughs> I feel like I just ate a scorpion pepper. <laughs> it's so bad. Hidden Barn Batch 1 is that bad. <laughs> it really is. Fireball, small batch, Dragon Reserve is better than uh, Hidden Barn Batch 1. Quote the Whiskey Mutant. Just quote the Whiskey Mutant. I don't care. Quote me. Is oh. this what my 30s is going to be like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get crazier as you're 30. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm at 37 and I'm, you know, I'm talking about f- this. All right. We got to put it to the normal. We do. Stuff. I agree with you. But I don't. I need a little bit more of a sip and then I'm good. Because you want more? No, I don't want it. Yeah, any. you do. I really don't. He does. Don't let him lie to you. <laughs> it's better. It's a decent pour. It's a flavored whiskey. Yeah, it's a flavored whiskey. I'm not going to compare it to some freaking amazing single barrel or bourbon. This is a decent pour. This is a fun pour if you're like having some friends over, you're drinking a bunch of whiskey and all that, and like, hey, let's try this. This is a fun pour. (laughs) As Perry chokes. As me, you know. I still don't like it. I'm not going to like go to it, but I don't mind it. It really just, all this does is take the... It takes the unnatural plasticky cinnamon flavor away and it just minimizes that crazy cinnamon stuff. That's all it does. It just dampens yeah, but I the, mean, it, the thing. <clears throat> okay, sure. And if it does that, it does it well. But that doesn't mean I like it. <laughs> no, that's fine. And when I review things, it's based on whether I like it or not. This is this is perfect for my high proof hot takes. Oh great! No no no! It's I'm gonna a open good, my toy while you. No, it's a good thing. No no seriously, because I'm gonna say that's fine. That's fine. Oh, okay okay. I'm saying like this is. I'm I'm pretty much the same as you. 
yeah, I'm not going to sit and like, I don't want this as my daily drinker. I don't want this as like a birthday pour. I'll probably, <laughs> I'll probably have this on my birthday. Um, this may be my birthday pour. You know what would be really funny is if we all had it as like a shot before we went out for your birthday. Yeah, let's do it. Um, but I'm just saying like, if you put fireball in an oak barrel, it helps. It doesn't hurt it. <laughs> it, it helps. It helps. You know what? It, I, I wish that we had time for it. And maybe maybe we do. What? Maybe we can um, make this happen. Um, but if at all possible, I would love to send a sample of this to Swan so that he can record his reaction to it and we put it into How fast this can we episode. get one to him? I, I mean, mean, if we send it tomorrow, it could be there on monday we can do that yeah <laughs> we have the we have the technology to do that <laughs> um no i'm just saying i'm not mad at this this is not an apps i'm not going to go on a rant how this is like ruined whiskey no, i know or i know like and i'm i i'm sorry i i do feel like i'm being elitist but about no, it no you're not no you're not because you're saying according to yourself you don't like it and you don't have to like it but you got to Review it. So do the thing. Tell them about how we review things. Yeah, all right. So we if, gotta... you're a, if you're a Fireball fan and this is your first episode, this is how we review things. Also, yeah, this is not a reflection upon your palate or telling you that you are wrong for liking a particular thing. This is our take on it. We are primarily bourbon drinkers. I may be a Fireball drinker after this, honestly. I will say the the longer that this, the, the finish sits with me, the better it gets. Yeah. <laughs> when we open this for my birthday, I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to do anything with it. Let's see if it gets any better. Do you think that this would go better with a Coke or Dr. Pepper? Uh, just a Coke. I think Dr. Pepper will make it too spicy. Yeah. I'm not a big Dr. Pepper fan. I'm either. not either. I think a Coke Zero with this will be really yeah. good. Anyway, so <clears throat> our review system is nose, palate, finish, and price. Each category is out of five, and it's a final score out of 20. What do you give the nose? I did all that work to not tear that label, and it just ripped on me. You didn't cut that part? I, I tried I to. you cut that. What are you talking about? I thought you cut like the side. You could just peel it off. No, no, no. I tried to like cut oh. where the, the adhesive was. They, so put, can... they put it farther down there. Yeah, I saw that. On the nose. Um, It's a two for me. A three. Like you said, it's fireball. Yeah. It smells like cinnamon. Um, but I like the smell of cinnamon. It it it's it do- the weirdest birthday episode I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like it. Uh it's a um it reminds me of growing up with Grand Grand and she had potpourri everywhere. Naruto. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> what that was. That would be amazing. Oh shit. It's actually really they, they chrome the package. Yeah. And it's got a card. And it's got a coin. It's actually a dude. Don't even pull that out. Don't pull that thing out. You can't you can't, you can't oh, hardly see that. it. It's all metallic, all in the inside. Dude. That's freaking you just set it up like that. Like display it like that. Ooh, that look good. Um, no, this reminds me of childhood, uh, when I used to drink fireball as a child. Not, not really. Um, <laughs> it's like a potpourri. It smells like potpourri. It's a comforting smell. I'm, I'm grading this on the fact that it's fireball. So yeah, I like it. It's three. It's comforting. Yeah. Two. Uh, palette's also a two for me. Uh, palette is a uh, four. Um, <laughs> I'm okay with this. I'm grading this on a fireball scale. Uh, I kind of like it. Um, no, I'm not going to drink it all the time. Are you blending it in barn? <laughs> yes, oh, sir. I guess I got two as well. Um, we kind of want to know what the finishing process would be like, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a mutant. I like funky nerds. I like weird stuff. I don't like scotch. I don't like Texas whiskey, but I do like fireball aged in oak barrels. It is killing me not taking that out of the actual box. You can't. Why? 
it, look that that's a presentation. You opened the package already. But the but like the experience of holding it is part of what makes it important. How to many me. have have you ever held a Spider Man Funko? Oh well, yeah. Okay. So the actual Funko is Spider Man, but the the packaging look, there's a freaking vault on the back of yeah, it. Right. You've held I, I one. really I really was curious if like I would open it up and it was like shredder like, yeah well i i didn't know how i hadn't looked at anything i didn't know how detailed like this stuff was. i didn't i didn't either like i've never seen a metallic like uh-uh. packaging along with this like you, you you've held a funko that spider-man before i know i know i know i know but it's the same reason that i opened the special whiskeys do you sit around and play with your funkos and not no Okay, then what's the point? You drink your whiskeys. Dude, that looks too good to open. And it's probably just a bobblehead. I don't think it is. It's not? No. Almost all the Marvels are bobbleheads. No, it's not. It's just, got the actual... Just save it. Save it for the new space. You're right, you're right. Um, Finish on this? I actually really like the finish. I that's love the that's finish. where it, it finish is a four. 3.5. <laughs> that's the best part of it for me. Yeah. What am um, I at? What, what did I say everything was? You had three, four, four, right? Mm-hmm. I had two, two, three and a half. So I'm at seven and a half right now. And the price was nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> five out of five for four. me. It's five, a four. <laughs> five. I'll give it a five. It's a four. It's a four for me. So I'm at a, uh, an 11.5. I'm at a 16. That's maybe. insane. <laughs> <laughs> that's so in- That's crazy. <laughs> if this wasn't like a special 618 bottle release, I'd probably keep this around for 1999. Yeah. I mean, I could see you doing something like a split base for a cocktail. Yeah. Like an ounce of bourbon and a half ounce of this just to like spice up an old fashioned or something. Mm -hmm. And I think you probably are going to have to. I'm already looking forward to our birth to my birthday where we do this. (laughs) Look at that. Interesting. I can't believe it's the same. I'm so glad that you pointed that out, that it's the same bottle. It's the exact same bottle. And, And I mean... I probably would have been able to make the connection even if it weren't a Sazerac product, but it definitely didn't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I had that connection between the two. Anyway, um, it's been the weirdest birthday ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like having me as your friend. <laughs> Things just are weird. And they just kind of happen. Yeah. They and don't you, necessarily, you, you're not always. A part of what happens, you sometimes things happen at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you kind of just expect it. Like you're not surprised. That's like not to bring it back to the uh, the wilderness trail pick, but that's like when you kept trying to call Grease, and then he finally called back, and I was the first person that he saw on the Facetime, and he just stared at me. Should we call him? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to keep doing this every time. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe next year during the meetup. Maybe. We'll see. maybe <laughs> That'll be a Patreon. Birth- maybe my birthday episode. Yes. Okay. Because anything goes 100%. in. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm barely hanging on to control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, do we want to do barrel rings before we get to high proof hot takes? Sure. Okay. Uh, we've got one barrel ring this week. This is a first time barrel ringer. Ooh. So we're a. Uh... Pop chicken wow wow. <laughs> hey guys, uh, this is Jared, pork loin. Um, first time leaving a barrel ring, but uh, I want to call and get uh, Eric's opinion on something. We, this year for our, our summer vacation, we're going to surprise the kids and uh, go to Disney for mm-hmm. the normal trip. 
because uh, we said, what's more fun than going to Orlando in the last week of August? It's <laughs> <be> beautiful weather. <laughs> but uh, I want to get Eric's opinion on uh, his favorite whiskey spots uh, at Disney, whether it's um, best value pours, uh, best selection, whatever it is, because I guess I'm going to need quite a few of these to survive uh, Disney and Universal for a week. Uh, and then also, Perry, I want to let you know you have made an enemy. Uh, I took took the time to hand write a letter. I knew. It I never hand write things. That was a lot of work. Too. Hand write a letter, <laughs> finder wax sealer, learn how to use it, send that off, and you so callously discarded it. I did you it. On your move. Oh. So, I hey. I hurt. have it somewhere. Uh, you've gone inside, but I didn't think I could be hurt. So um, I'll remember this. Oh. Probably forever. Oh. But. Uh, Keep it up, guys. Uh, love all the podcasts and wish you well. Bye. Okay. He said he loved the podcast, so you're good. But you have to explain yourself first before I get into my Disney Orlando recommendations. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday Just talk about it. Okay. So uh, you probably know this, <laughs> but listening to the show and watching our content. Uh, I am not the most organized person in the world, but also I did not realize until maybe about a week or two before our move that a letter that we had asked somebody to send to us oh, yeah, we did had whole thing actually about, been man, sent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the request was, I don't even remember what episode it was, that somebody hand write us a letter Actually, you requested this. It was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm accepting the brunt of the responsibility for it. But that somebody hand write us a letter, put it in an envelope, seal it with wax, like a wax stamp, <laughs> and then we would read it on the podcast. Now, <laughs> in my defense, <laughs> I knew exactly where it was. And knew that I I was going to put it in a particular space yeah. in my stuff right. before I broke my foot. Yeah. So by the time that I broke my foot, well, when I broke my foot, I was completely useless. Yeah. Like I just was unable to do any everything was monumentally difficult for me All right. to do. Yeah. So it is somewhere. <laughs> I'm not saying it's gone. I promise you it's in our stuff. It just is not readily available. I will find it. Yeah. I promise. Okay. <laughs> but I just want to let you know. I'm really sorry. Sorry, Jared. <laughs> I want to let you know. That's amazing that you were listening. You've done way more than some of the other people that listen to this podcast when we ask them to do things. So you get the you get ten, a gold star, man. You get the ten bip uh, seal of approval. Every week we're going to give a listener a gold star from yeah, now on. Gold star. <laughs> uh, you got the gold star this week. Uh, if you're going to Disney, I could have gotten the gold star for my birthday. You got a. Funko Pop that sold. I got out the at, Chrome Star that sold out at San Diego. That sold out. Yes. Dang. Yeah. Sold okay. out. All right. NWO sold out. Uh, okay. I don't know what your uh, your plan of attack, your itinerary is, but you need to pack a barrel-proof bottle that you love, and I'm going to put you on the... I'm going to, like... What's the thing when, when they say, uh, like, you kind of speed run, like, some lessons or something? speed run fast track fast track i want to fast track you on uh the whiskey mutant way um so pack you a bottle of your favorite bell proof because <clears throat> you're going to want to start each day out with a small pour of barrel proof whiskey in a coffee cup because if you get on the bus if you get on the skyliner if it's a coffee cup they'll think you're drinking coffee they won't say anything. I made this mistake once. I took a plastic cup with some whiskey on the Skyliner. The guy is obviously a bourbon drinker. He saw it. He said, I think that's spirits. You better finish it. And I said, thanks for the update. And he made me finish it. So I... I really? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't have any alcohol on the Skyliner. Yeah. 
And he said, but he gave me the heads up. He didn't just say dump it. He said, finish that really fast. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, so I downed about an ounce. What of, a homie. Uh, JD barrel proof before I went into Hollywood studios. Um, pack a barrel proof. Um, I, my tradition is always it's vacation. I can do what I want. Um, I, I drink a little barrel proof before I go into each park. Magic Kingdom, no alcohol in there. There's a few dinner places, depending on where you're having dinner, that has beer. Uh, you could do that, but get a little, get like a like an apple juice bottle that your kids won't get into. If you have kids, put a little bourbon in that. You can make some, you can drink that neat. You can mix it with some Coke throughout. They don't care if it's a plastic bottle and you can't tell it's alcohol. They don't care in Magic Kingdom. Um, all three other parks have stands and places that have whiskey, so I don't even pack anything extra there because I'm going to be drinking cocktails and stuff. Um, Hollywood Studios, any random place, you'll see some random Buffalo Trace or anything like that. There are some restaurants in Hollywood Studios that have the smoked turkey, which is a uh, turkey 101 cocktail, which is amazing. Do that if you see it. Um, Animal Kingdom has a Jack Daniels. Uh, it's the Yeti Sunset, I believe. It's close to um, uh, the uh, Mount Everest ride. Get that. That's a great cocktail there. Epcot is filled with places. You have to go inside the pyramid at Mexico to the tequila bar, which is a famous tequila bar inside. Skip the stuff outside. There is a um, corn old fashioned. Um, I think that's what they call it. Corn yeah. old fashioned. And it is like a um, mezcal type thing, but they use it on this trail. Rye. You got to get that. Um, if you're going to, ride three caballeros finish it before because the people at three caballeros do not allow rides on the ride um, they don't what they don't all right oh sorry they don't allow drinks on the they ride. don't allow rides on the ride oh they don't do that either <laughs> they don't allow drinks on the ride so get the corn old-fashioned um i tried it once it doesn't work <laughs> Uh, but as you're going around Epcot, around the uh, World Showcase... Well, hang on. Doesn't Mexico also have the um, the margarita with the avocado? They have a Dude, ton of margaritas inside. It's, like a, it, it's called like the creamy I think margarita or something like that. Yeah. And, it, and they use a little bit of avocado in it to just like thicken it up. Right. Am it's I, like am the, I misremembering this? No, I think that's a uh, that's like a food and wine special that they had outside at the one of the booths. Okay. Okay. Um, but food and wine is going on right now, so you may catch that. Um, you just grab random drinks throughout. Just enjoy yeah. having a drink throughout Epcot. Um, There's an old fashioned, I think, at Canada that uses crown maple. Yes, they have a um, maple old fashioned. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, incredible. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Um, um, Moosehead Lager, too. You can get at uh, at Canada. Un- uh, it's such a great beer. It's like Canada's, um, and you know people's opinions of Stella kind of vary, but I really like Stella Artois. Right. Um, and it's like the Canadian version of Stella. Yeah. Um, so Moosehead Lager. Um, if you stop at so, uh, the uh, American or the U.S. spot on the showcase, Budweiser, uh, get you some Bud Light. Um, now they have uh, neat pours of Knob Creek, Woodford, Buffalo Trace, um, maybe something else. Jack Daniels, I think they have a Jack Daniels cocktail there. But I usually get a neat pour there because I'm just ready for a neat pour because I've had cocktails. Um, and they usually have like a banana foster or some kind of like bread pudding dessert at the stand. So I get that and I do a pour over of each there. Um, so we've covered all the parks. If you go to Disney Springs, tons of cocktails everywhere. Um, the Polite Pig is the place to go if you want some different um barrel picks or neat pours they have a huge bourbon bar they have pulled pork sandwiches barbecue stuff go to the plot pick if you have a chance to go to like some of the other resorts and you try their bars like ohana different places like that you can get a parks and resorts knob creek pour yes 
Um, if anywhere you see a Parks and Resorts Knob Creek single barrel, get it. That is like they don't. It doesn't say Disney single barrel, but that's their version of a pick that the people from Disney picked. It's Parks get, and Resorts. Get a double. <laughs> get a double. I, I mean, honestly, it's vacation. It's gonna it's gonna Just save you it. time too. And I, I I'm I'm not trying to. I uh, give a large corporation more money than yeah. I already do, but, but it's honestly, risky. it is, it is hands down just one of the best Knob Creek single barrels. Yeah, ever. And I know they do different picks, but their picks are always they're consistently so good. good. Um, I wish that I had been able to actually get a bottle. Yeah. Um, and like you know, hindsight's twenty twenty and whatnot, but. I mean, I I had the opportunity to grab a bottle before I knew that I could even do that. Yeah, and I just never capitalized right. on it, and uh, I I still regret it. I'm not saying that I would have held on to it like my firstborn, but uh, I, I mean, at the very least, it would have been nice to take home as a souvenir. <laughs> yeah. So that's so. kind of the quick rundown. Um, hopefully that helps. Honestly. Send uh, me or Perry a direct message if you want some. I'll, I will type up something more detailed if you want, um, depending on when you leave. But yeah, we also it. have the uh, the mutant coffee oh, cocktail, yeah. like actually written out. Yeah, I have it too. all written out. There's a whole Joffrey's mutant cocktail that I made up that uh, you want to get when you go into each park. And the Pear Bear, barely there. Coffee cocktail. <laughs> Pear Bear Barely Pear Bear there. Barely There uh, yeah. was not as good as the Joffrey's <laughs> Mutant Special. That's good. Pear Bear um, Barely There. What did it what did it wind up being? It wound up being uh iced coffee. Two percent Kahlua. It was like two shots of Kahlua and something else. Maybe Bailey's. Um, it was very creamy. Yeah, <laughs> it was uh, a creamy boy. The Joffreys. <laughs> oh boy, creamy. Um, the Joffreys in Magic Kingdom. You can't do this, but the Joffreys at Epcot, uh, Animal Kingdom, and uh, Hollywood. You can do this. Get the cold brew shaken Jamaican, um, but tell them to substitute. Like they'll give you like just some random cream substitute. You want to add Bailey's, and you want to add a shot of Jameson. So it's like a cold brew with Bailey's and Jameson, and that's the uh, mutant version of the shaken having, Jamaican. Having had it a couple weeks ago. You were on edge when you had it last time. Yeah, I was. You were scared. <laughs> Don't I'm, be scared. Embrace I'm still on, it. I'm still on edge. Embrace it. Yeah. There you go. Uh, high proof hot takes? Yeah, I got one. All right. Go for it. And I may need you to help guide me through this. Okay. Because I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, I think I got it in my head to say the right thing. But the term or the phrase that everybody has to use as subjective i'm done i'm done saying that um i think everything's subjective if i like something and you don't like it yeah we have different palettes the same with shoes i I post a picture of myself with some crocs that people don't like yeah they give me shit about it but i don't mind i like it i like it it's all subjective i'm just done i'm kind of done with uh having to say that if I don't like something. And that's just me. I'm just done doing that because we should all just accept that, like, if I say I don't like it, if you say I do like it, you shouldn't feel like you have to say like, yeah. well. Well, that's that's kind of what I was <clears throat> about to get at. I don't think that's a you problem as much as you are kind of holding on to it being... Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I don't I want to get it out right now that I don't want to use that anymore and I want you to help me if I ever if we're doing a review and I say, "Well, okay. sure. Well, you know, our palettes are different and it's okay. This is for someone I want you to like slap me on the head or something." Because I want to just be able to be like 
if you, if somebody else says something, if you say something and I say, I don't like this, I want to know that like, I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. Oh, Just yeah, like I was sure. saying early, like you said, you don't like this and I do. So the second part of that is if you are somebody that like, if you're an influencer or if you're somebody that does bourbon content and you say that a lot, like everybody drink what they like. Everybody has a different palate. It's okay. But then you turn around and like give somebody crap about it. Then you're being a hypocrite and you shouldn't do that. If you want to know the real reason I'm saying this, you can go to my um, uh, threads or you can be on the discord. Cause I posted a little bit about this. It's okay to say you don't agree with something, but don't yeah. call somebody out. And then in another video, you said, it's okay. Everybody has a different palette and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? You, you kind of? Yeah. It's like you say that, but then you make a whole post about like, I overheard somebody say this and I just rolled my eyes. Like, why? Why did you make a post about that? If you've said before, like, everybody tastes something different, like, and then make a whole post where somebody people have to be like everything's everything's subjective it's just in that okay you can say that that's fine but then don't make a whole thing to where you have to make people like explain themselves that's a bad problem right now and i'm just going to say it with influencers and people is they say things like that but then they also give people a hard time if people reply to their posts and stuff instead of, instead of just leaving it like you know what that's fine you can like what you like yeah i i i try to be very amicable with that kind of mindset of well this is what i think so i'm sorry that yeah i'm done <laughs> you don't also think the same if thing if i ever say like I don't like this. And then I say, well, but you know, this may be for somebody or this may, this is objective. Just punch me, <laughs> slap me, do something. I'm done. Okay. Because then I want to be able to say like, Hey, I don't care. I'm going to say what I want and I'm going to like what I want and I'm going to do all that. And if I don't like it, that's just how it is. You know, I've never thrown a punch before. It's your birthday. Go for it. No. <laughs> 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 you just beat the shit out of me. You take all of your anger out of me. <laughs> you said it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm. But I'm just saying, if if yeah. there's nothing wrong with saying that, I'm just saying I'm kind of done with it. And if you say that, then don't turn around and blast somebody. Um, if they say something different, just be yeah. like, you know what? That's your palate. That's how you feel. That's okay. Don't be like, I'm going to roll my eyes at you. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. Uh, I don't, are, I don't, I'm totally getting called out <laughs> right now because people are going to know what this is about. I don't have any high proof hot takes. This is all whiskey music right sweet. here, baby. Yeah. I'm trying to stay positive on my birthday episode, <laughs> Imagine how which we've lost sight of. <laughs> Whatever. Away. This is the best birthday for me. <laughs> <laughs> Tips and bits, though. Ooh. I got a I got one show to recommend. Okay. Um this show should never have been this entertaining. It probably should have never been made, but it was was Twisted Metal. Oh, with Anthony Mackey? Yes. Yeah. This is a TV show on Peacock based after the PlayStation game Twisted Metal where all these random like people in different cars, you got Sweet Tooth, he's in like an ice cream truck, they're in the game you just try to kill each other in cars. Well, they made a whole show about this, and I watched the whole show, and I was thoroughly entertained. Nice. Is this a m amazing show? Like, if you break it down, probably not. Is this a very entertaining, you don't have to think about anything show that's fun to watch? Absolutely. Um, each episode is only like 30 minutes, and they somehow did a great job of putting all these like characters that you know from the game in there without making it too corny. But then towards the end, they full blown went twisted metal on it. I mean, there's blood, there's sex, there's cussing, there's all this fun stuff, just 30 minute episodes that are just fun to watch and you just have a good time. And you think this, this shouldn't have worked. 
but it did. Here we are. Yeah. So I recommend Twisted Metal on Peacock. How many episodes are there? Ten. Okay. 30 minutes piece. It's not bad. No. Not bad Easy watch, fun watch, highly recommend. Um, I don't really know exactly how it started, but I've, I've been on a Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Z kick. Oh, yeah? Recently, and... um. I uh, I I got the the urge to go back and watch the Future Trunks arc from Dragon Ball Super. Is it better or worse? It's worse. Oh, I haven't, and, I haven't and rewatched it, but I really liked it on the first watch. It's it's worse, but it's still really enjoyable. Okay. With that in mind, the manga arc is heads above it. I mean, it's okay. so, it is so much better. It's so much better paced. Um, there's so many things that are left out of, well, not left out because that, you know, the manga actually was being developed at the same yeah. time. Um, but there are story beats that happen in the anime that didn't actually happen in the manga, um, which I, I think works to the advantage of the manga, it's just it's quicker. It it's got a better overall storyline, yeah, to it. Um, and uh, the mystery of it is is too drawn out in the anime. Okay, I would say. Um, but then it got me to go. Well, you know what? I haven't done. I haven't played. Oh, I know where this the, is going the Game Boy Advance Legacy of Goku games mm. in a while. Uh, I always skip the first one <laughs> because it's a nightmare number of two. an experience. Go straight to number two. Go straight to number two, um, which I still hold up as one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. Uh, and Boo's Fury is number three. It's still technically a Legacy of Goku game, even though it doesn't um, hold the same title. But... Um, I've, I've flown through those two pretty quickly. I've, I've liked taking a break from the more serious tears of the kingdom Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Uh, and just being a little more nostalgic than I have been with, with some of my video gaming recently. And, you know, like I, um, I don't, I don't know if I, I talked about this, but we showed Eden, the uh the mario movie yeah super mario i Bros. think movie. you mentioned it okay last time um and so it just really got me in the mood to to play mario games yeah so i've kind of been bouncing back and forth but be- between a couple of the old platformers but uh last f- <clears throat> friday friday or saturday uh we went to go see barbie at the the drive-in movie oh yeah and uh oh my gosh it's so much fun. Such a fun movie. It is incredibly fun. Um, it was the first movie experience that we took Eden to. That's awesome. Because she loves Barbie. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, well, I've got to I've got to commemorate this. So before we even left the drive-in, I had ordered her the actual Barbie movie, Barbie. Ooh. The Margot Robbie one. The Margot Robbie mm-hmm. Barbie. That's um, sweet. So that's like, you know, we can talk about it when she gets older and it can be yeah. a part of her like collection of That'd be awesome. things. And um I don't know, like I, I'm I'm so sentimental as it is that not that I want to like foster that exclusively with my kid, because I do think that Lucy and I have a good balance between the two of us. Um I at least want to, you know, commemorate things that are important to me (laughs) yeah not that i want to like place that on her with like a sense of responsibility or anything but i did want to just you know try to to build that that memory that's awesome or hold on to it but uh that was the second time ever that i have been to a drive-in i haven't been to a drive-in since i was young i was i was eight yeah and the only reason I remember that, oh wait, eight or nine, um, 
I was I was going for a friend's birthday party. And we uh it, it was at the old Versailles one where there was like yeah. the, the dual screens. Yeah. And everybody was really excited about uh Attack of the Clones, which was playing on one screen, but on the other screen was Spider Man. Oh. <laughs> and I did not care for Star Wars at the time. So you were on Spider Man. So I was wanting to watch Spider Man. So you know That's there a were, good double though. There were like ten of us. That's a good double feature. But it was, yeah. I mean, like, kind of double feature, but also, well, like, I mean, but playing at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a good year for yeah. blockbusters, I guess. Spider um, clone, <laughs> Attack of the Spider Clones. Yeah, Attack yeah. of the Spider, Spider so, Clone. Um, yeah, the driving's fun, man. It's fun. I, I wish I were able to go more, but I think that's, uh, I think that's the show. Do you want to take us home? Well, if you want to be part of our home. You can go to patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast for as little as a dollar a month. You can support the show. But at five dollars, that's when you start getting all the good stuff. Let me tell you, we got bonus episodes. You get the uncut episode. We're in the middle of big ass August 2023. Bigger, assier, classier. You sign up for that five dollars, you get some special stuff, and then so on. You get all the you, you get special stuff from us. It's going on all month. It's not a lifetime commitment, but but the lifetime know, of your it's at least a promise ring. Um <laughs> so you get bonus stuff. The Patreon is where you want to be. Uncut, extra stuff, special stuff. That's just what it is. Go to patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. Um, if you want to send us an email, you can. You can send it to this my bourbon shop at gmail.com. That's where you can find out where to send us stuff if you want us to review. If you got suggestions for pairings, you got episode suggestions just send us an email there uh, if you want to get some merch it's bourbonshop.threadless.com um, you can get a bunch of uh, tim bip uh, t-shirt designs there's random sales that happen so be part of that if you want to get some whiskey mutant merch it's whiskeymutant.myshopify.com i'm working on some new stuff coming up hopefully um, if you want to uh, uh, go to social media it's at my bourbon pod pretty much across everything. If you want to follow me for pairings and different stuff, it's Whiskey Mutant, at Whiskey Mutant. Uh, if you want to follow Perry, at P Ritter 1792 uh, If you want to go to Facebook, we have a Facebook group for the show. Answer some questions, do all that. This is my Bourbon Podcast Facebook group. Um, There's so few people in there. I know. Based on how many listeners we actually have, it should be full. should be full. should be way more people Fill than it, it actually is. Get all up in there. Um, the link should be in the description as well. I if, think it, it is. if it isn't, then if you I'll have fix to, it this if week, if you have to follow a link to go to Facebook, we got to talk. <laughs> Just go to Facebook, search the group, um, tell everybody about us, uh, support the show by giving us a thumbs up, thumbs down. If you're watching this on YouTube, all the, all the episodes are, have video versions on YouTube. If you're listening on your podcast app of choice leave a review leave a uh, five star rating leave a one star rating everything helps we'll read your ratings out on here um and then just tell your grandma grandpa um friends family all that stuff about us anything helps i think we have some new patreon members this oh week. snap we do you're right so let's see uh let me tell you about how i talk to them we got well i guess technically one new patron, but but I, also somebody else who I had ran a, into I some had a problems. Second date with one of yeah, them. exactly. Yeah, uh, but welcoming our truly new patron to the show, Josh. Josh Boyer, yeah, longtime friend of Tim Pep. Yeah, me and Josh, me and Josh. I'm so glad he finally joined the Patreon. We had been texting, uh, messaging, DMing each other. Because we both had a great experience with like um, the food services that were like subscription box based. Mm. Mr. Meaty. Um, Mr. Meaty, you get all your best meats, the longest meat, the thickest meat, just the best meat month by month. And we both signed up for that at the same time. And somehow we both posted about it. Um, and then I was like, I messaged him. I'm like, dude, how are you liking Mr. Meaty each month? And he's like, I love Mr. Meaty. It's the best meat in my mouth each month. 
Um, some of it gave you worms. Uh, we didn't have that experience. Um, but we both have been talking about all the meat that we have. The thickest, the longest. We, we don't want small meat. We don't want viennese. We want all the good stuff. And I was like, dude, you want more meat? Join the Patreon. He was like, you know what? I'm always wanting more meat inside me. And um, I said, yeah, you can put it in your ears. You can put it in your mouth. You can do all that stuff. While, while you eat your meat, you can listen to your meat. So um, we both have decided to listen to podcasts while we eat meat. And he said, I'm going to be listening to the Patreon content while I eat my thick meaty meats from Mr. Meaty. And we talk every week about Mr. Meaty. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> also, this guy, I don't... <laughs> It's it's Don Nishida. My dad. <laughs> Don Nishida has been a part of the Patreon. But something happened with his billing and he signed back up. I don't know. But either way. I don't either. Don, Don tried to act like he was going to be a rival to me um, by sending me rotten meat from Hawaii. Mm. It was a joke. But you know what, Don? I can smell the meat from the box. It was very rotten. I go... You, you, Don, tried to get me, but you didn't. And I told him, and he's like, ah, you got me. But then um, he sent me some fresh meat straight from Hawaii. Um, it's, uh, I, I don't know if you ever had it. Spam? He sent me, it was from I Hawaii. Don't, I've, never, I've never heard of this before. I started frying it up. It was a Spam sandwich. Okay. Put a little mustard on it. Put some good bread on it. Freaking so good. Spam sandwich with, I mean, I've never had this before. I if think it's you, pronounced Spam sandwich. Sandwich. Spam sandwich. If you can ever get some Spam from Hawaii, put a little mustard on it. Don, thank you so much for sending me some of your Spam. Um, so good. Thank you for signing back up. Whatever happened, either way, here you are again. That just means that you care enough about us to. Yeah. Yeah. You know. He, he right sends us stuff all the time, but this was the best meat package he had ever given me. Um, one of the times he gave me a meat package, I don't know if I was ready for it. It was a little uncomfortable, but I took it. It's kind of a surprise. Yeah, um, but this time it was a welcome surprise. I love some Don Nishida Spam meat. So... Okay. Happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday to me. And Happy thank you all for being here. You. Um, thank you, Eric, for... I saved a little bit of my uh, fireball reserve. That's great. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> thank you for watching, listening, subscribing, supporting the show, all of those good things. See you uh, uh, real soon. Until then, though. Birthday recap next week for Perry. He's going to be 30. <sighs> Until then, I'm Perry. I'm Fireball Whiskey Mutant. And this is my bourbon podcast. Here you go. Finish that. Okay, I will. No. <laughs> <laughs> no Abs- absolutely not. not. I refuse. <laughs>